an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and recently I spent some time with my folks for a week And I got to be honest, I did a lot more sitting than I usually do, and I noticed something very strange. The strange part was that after doing all of that sitting, then I started audibilizing when I would stand or when I would sit down. So I would stand up and I go, oh, all right, sit down, all right, sitting back down. And I like, I'm scared of myself. <laughs> I just didn't notice these sounds are coming out of me as I'm standing or sitting. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is what, what old people do. And granted, I'm not a young buck anymore, but come on. But I have to be honest, I may have been doing, I did a lot more sitting than I normally have. So maybe it was me picking up a little bit on my folks and what my mom or dad may have done some grunting or groaning a bit upon sitting or standing, but I think ultimately and truthfully, I was just more stiff. In fact, I was far more achy during that week where I was spending with my folks and we really didn't get up and move a lot. And I didn't do a lot of workouts. I did a workout that my son had created and I posted it on social media. So if you want to check out my six-year-old's workout program, then you can you can check it out. Um, m- most importantly, it was the the 45 burpees that I just don't think that he knew what 45 burpees meant to me. <laughs> so so that was that was probably uh, worse than all the other things put together. But you know you know some people some of you love burpees. You're gonna really dig his workout program. But aside from that, aside from that workout. It was far more sitting. It was it was far less exercising. So the standing did elicit a sound. And it was an unusual feeling for me. It was an unusual achy feeling. So when I did stand, it was abnormal. And so I did make sounds because I had feelings that I hadn't had before. And so anyway, I was telling one of my clients about it. I had gotten back and uh, today... Uh, or recently I'm, I'm training again back in New York City. So I was happy to be back in New York. Loved my time in Alabama with my folks. But And I have a client, a retired physician, and I was telling him about it. And he used the magic words, words I knew, but I didn't have the maxim that went along with it. The words he said as he spoke, he said, motion is lotion. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's so true. It's so true. In fact, it's so true. I went immediately to the literature and started looking things up, particularly with people who um, have arthritis or have recently had hip or knee replacements or things like that. What, What is it that we see in the data that shows, in fact, that motion is lotion. Now, there's another great quote I love, and it's through uh, Anthony Robbins in his book. I believe it's Awaken, Awaken the Giant Within. And he says, motion creates emotion. And, and I think that there's a lot to be said for that as well. The mental feeling that we get, the mental fortitude that we get from movement and increased physical activity, and yes, through exercise. But we're going to talk about today more about the physical benefits that come from it. The motion is lotion, the the ability for us to feel better in our bones and in our joints through movement as opposed through um, 
through sitting down and not moving those joints that are sore or achy. So here we go with Ferreira et al. in a meta-analysis 2019. And he suggests that, and this is a quote, exercise, and then it says in parentheses, especially resistance training had the best positive effects of knee osteoarthritis patients. Well, that sounds good to me, especially resistance training. I'm going to say that the majority of people who have achy knees, resistance training is probably the last thing on their list. I think it's good. We might think going for a walk. And yes, that's great. And those things did uh, seem to be beneficial. But resistance training especially had positive effects on the osteoarthritis patients. That's that's good news. That's good news to me, especially especially to me because I have happen to have osteoarthritis in my right knee after having several surgeries, uh, a few scopes, torn meniscus, torn MCL through a tumbling routine going gone wrong, and uh, my fault completely. But I wish it hadn't happened, you know. So that's Ferreira et al. 2019. Here's Go et al. 2019, a systematic review and meta-analysis in the Annals of Physical Rehabilitation Medicine. Here's a quote from the study. Exercise significantly reduces pain and improves function, performance, and quality of life in people with knee and hip osteoarthritis as compared with usual care after eight weeks or at eight weeks. The effects are maximal around two months and thereafter slowly diminish. And then they begin to be no better than the usual care during the nine to 18 months. All right, let me get this straight though. So it does really well for, uh, let's see, what was it? It does really well for people in eight weeks, right? And then the maximal you get is, is around that two month period. And then between the nine and 18 months, physical activity is no better then standard care, which is probably oral medications. So you're telling me it's no better, but it's clearly no worse. So you bet it's the same. So what I can do is I can get all the benefits from physical activity. I can get the movement, minimizing my sedentary behavior, improving my physical uh, fitness, and then all the other things we know that come with regular physical activity, which is things like a decrease in anxiety, decrease in depression, decrease in cardiovascular uh, experiences, in the um, uh, in, in diabetes and the effects of diabetes on the body and some cancers. All of these things are wonderful things. But at eight, nine to 18 months, it's just... Exercise is about the same for osteoarthritis patients that have the standard of care, but that standard of care doesn't affect the body positively as does physical activity. So I think physical activity then is probably an excellent choice. One that I would suggest and I would encourage. Well, Go's not done. G-O-H, by the way, I go. 2019 did another systematic review and meta-analysis in the Journal of Sports Medicine. And this was the conclusion. The effect of exercise varies according to type of exercise and target outcome. Sidebar, it also seems to vary in the phenotype of the individuals. So just different body types experience things and different people experience things differently. All right, back to the quote. Aerobic or mind-body exercise may be the best for pain and function improvements. Strengthening and flexibility and skill exercises may be used for multiple outcomes. And then it said mixed exercise is the least effective and the reason for this merits further investigation. And I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what all the mixed information is about. I pulled this from the abstract. I am admitting in this moment that I am an abstract reader and that I was pulling data so I could quickly put this together so I have some content to provide for you. So I didn't actually see what the exercises were, but we do know that they find that exercise 
especially aerobic and mind-body exercises are, are good for uh, pain outcomes and improvement of function. Well, we saw previously Ferreira et al. 2019 meta-analysis, uh, and that was a meta-analysis of meta-analyses. So he pulled a lot of meta-analysis and showed that resistance training had a superior effect than many other types. All right, let me go do one more. Lao, L-I-A-O et al. Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis, a 2020 study in the journal Nutrients. And this one's important because it's nutrients. This is a combination study. So they studied protein intake and physical uh, resistance training, so exercise. And so what they found. Um, they found, it says, our findings suggest that protein supplementation plus exercise training improves muscle mass, muscle strength, in functional outcomes and reduces pain in older adults with lower limb OA or osteoarthritis, particularly in those who have undergone total joint replacement. Well, there is a very important reason once you go through surgeries and you go through total joint replacements that they send you to physical therapy. They send you there to increase your movement, decrease your pain, and increase your quality of life through movement. Well, this all goes back to the wonderful title of the show today, which is Lotion is Motion. And I found out that that relaxing is rusting in many instances where I was just reclining and sitting down and not doing the physical activity that I had normally been doing and noticed myself audibly noticed myself, but physically noticed myself far more achy, much more stiff as I spent that week with my folks. It also encouraged me to have a conversation with my mom and dad about increased physical activity, about more movement, about how stiff that I was feeling and achy I was feeling, and that the, the movements that they don't want to do because what they're attributing to is their age. And there's one thing that we can't control, that is age. But one thing we can control is how we feel. And through movement, we have increased experiences, a quality of life, and increased sense of pride. And that increased sense of pride goes further to increasing how we feel about our quality of life. So I encourage you, to encourage others to move. I didn't even say exercise. And I told my folks, put exercise out of your mind. But what needs to be in top of mind is getting up more throughout the day, limiting the amount of time that you spend sitting, limiting the amount of time that you spend lying down, that you spend playing solitaire and watching the news. Get up. Move more throughout the day, feel better, and I would say uh, potentially living longer. But as this, uh, this gentleman my dad told me about years ago, his name was Mr. Pig. And Mr. Pig, uh, my dad said, uh, did I ever tell you a story about Mr. Pig? And I said, no, no, it sounds like a childhood story that I missed. And he said, no, Mr. Pig is 99 years old and he works out at the Y. And... Uh, he sent me an article that was done on Mr. Pig. And the article, the person asked, is exercise the reason you have lived so long? And he said, I don't know if it is the reason that I have lived as long as I have, but I do believe it is the reason that I have lived as well as I have. And I agree. All right. Thanks so much for taking your time listening to the podcast. If you like the podcast, leave some comments, rate the show, uh, leave some feedback, like, subscribe, share with your fitness family. And uh, we would appreciate that. If you want to reach out to me, you can do so. You can DM me uh, on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or you can email me rick.ritchie. 
That's R-I-C-H-E-Y at NASM.org. And uh, if you're looking for a 30-minute workout that you can do, I will send you one. I'm going to sign you up for the NASM Edge app. I've had multiple fitness professionals take me up on it, and uh, many of them who have started training off the NASM app as well, some of which who have trained with me remotely. If that's something that you're interested in doing, you can also reach out to me, DM me, or hit me up on email. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening. This is the NASM CPT Podcast.